peace in Islam. We're gonna today we're gonna put something on the record. It's the Asiatic Moorish American bloodline going back to the first families from the bibliotheques. We're gonna connect it to us today. Alright? It's our book of kings. Genesis and Genesis. So let's put it on the record. The preface. In order to understand more about the ancient Moabite documents of America, we must first seek to comprehend more about the various ancient Semitic and Hermetic tongues slash languages, dialects, and their family character. Hieroglyphs, similarities. The Semitic from the son of Shem, from which the name Semitic comes from, found in Genesis 10 11, namely Ashur, from whence Ashuric, which became Assyric, which became Seretic, Seretic, which became Arabic, was birth, and Aram, from whence Aramic came at Eber, the son of Sheila, whom are all Moorish. And, uh, and I read this before I read half of it, so I can put the whole thing on the record in this video for Moorish Americans. The, Ham the Hamites and their dispersion. Then we have those families of Hermetic stock beginning with Cam or Ham, Kim, father of Canaan, and the Beni Cam, and Omakush, father of Nimrod, the great land proprietor, whose extended domains included Babel, Erech, Kalne, and Akkad, named, named after Akkad, from whence the Akkadian dialect derives. And again, remember, all these are worldly people, including the Americas. They just cut the history off due to Columbus got to discover it. But it's the world history. It's you all over the world, including America. So these are the Hamatic predecessors of Mizraim, who represent the second people derived from Cam. From Mizraim, we have the Ludim who were undoubtedly the progenitors of the Moorish tribes of North Mesa, America. Next are the Anami or Anami, who were the forerunners of Moors known as Numidians, inhabiting the oasis of the desert and represented by the <coughs> modern tribe of Anin. Following the Anami, Anami, I, and the Ludim, the Mistraim, the United States playing as them now. That's why Washington D.C. is like Egypt is like got an obelisk and everything. That's what they claiming to be. <laughs> you. Following the Anami, I are the Lahabim, the Lahabim. Settled in as Libyans on the Mediterranean coast between Egypt and the Syrian Cetus Major. They were the Libyans of the classical history and the Lubim of other parts of the Holy Bible bibliography and bibliographica of the Asiatic family. The Asiatica bibliographica familia. Next are the Nephutuhim. <laughs> Nehutu Kim, who settled about the Maroetis on the west port of Egypt, represented by the Naphtali <laughs> or Coptic Christians literature. They spoke a Moorish dialect and were the easternmost tribe of the Greek Gatulian family of the Hamites. And see, he telling you in a worldwide perspective, we're just going by the bibliotheques and 
certain historical accounts but we even if those historical accounts or the bibliotheques don't make it clear to you that we're talking about us you gotta understand there ain't no place name called America at that time but there was an Eastern and Western Libyan Libya so we gotta understand where, where they have far west and we got the empire of Egypt not just what we call Egypt at the day but he giving it to you in these forms so you could be able to stand on it even in the bibliotheques or the Quran and Talmud and all that on the Patrusim or the Farusi of so called ancient Barbary who settled in Mauritania, a part of modern 1956 Morocco. They are regarded by some as the people of Patros, which is equivalent to the Debaid or the Upper Egypt. Debaid. <laughs> Next are the Kalsuhim, Kasluhim, or Kasluhim who are represented by the Shilohs of Barbary, one of the main branches of the Greek Aetolian family of Hamites. Of the Kalsuhim came the Philistine, who are universally recognized as the historical Philistines, or the Moorish Canaanites on the east of the Mediterranean, are the same also issued the Kaptrohim. They are followed by Boot, the third Hermetic colony generally admitted to have inhabited the Mediterranean coast of West Egypt. Now you see, we already know Put in the West in America, so we got all these tribes in America. That's what he's saying, and we know that by the language. Who these people was that been left on the stones all over the continent. And it's also chapter 47, Holy Quran, Circle 7, the Morsan Temple of America, and Long Form. Next came Canaan, or Canaan, which designate Phoenicians or Poenikium, so called classical history, and everybody know they've been all over the world. Just treat the rest of these tribes the same, even though they might not talk about it as much. We don't care. <laughs> who in early times were spread over the whole of the Holy Land, Phoenicia prop. They became completely semitized before the time of the heart of the Majesty Re, Ab Hart Ra, Sun De Deity Ham, Cam or Kemet, Majesty or equals Abraham. Next in line is Sidon, representing the Sidonians. Their city, the modern Seda, was located on the Mediterranean about 33 degrees and 34 degrees. Same as Charleston. Same parallel. Later, when driven up by their brethren, the Philistines, they sought refuge on the rocky islet upon which they founded Tyre. Next is Heath, indicating the Arkath, indicating the Hittites whose country were near Hebron on to Ibusi or Yebusites denoting a man of the city of Ibus or Yebus a primitive city built on the site of Jerusalem <laughs> next are the Amori or the Amorite which is a Moorish tribal designation whose geographical position was the mountainous region in Canaan also being a Palestinian colony of Canaanites, followed by the Gergesites, Gergeshai, who were simply the name of another Canaanite tribe. Next, we have the Hewites, the United tribe of Canaanites who, in the time of Joshua, were inhabitants of Gibeon and entered into a treacherous peace with the general. The Hevites is presented as dwelling under Hermon and the land of Mispe and the kingdom of the Moabites. So all these families, first families. That's why the president called himself first family. He's trying to be 
Next are the Arkwright. The Arkwright, the Arkites. Arki. Signify a man of Arkra or Arirea. Aera. A city whose ruins still exist between Tripoli and Old Phoenician and, and Tar Tardus. Next is Sinite. And again, all these people still around and they all went through time and all over this earth. And he's you today. <laughs> Do you know him a man of sin? A town near Aedra on the slopes <laughs> of Mount Lebanon, the Sini, or the Sinites. The Arvidites, the Arvidi. Do you know him a man of a town now called <coughs> Ruida on the little island of Ardus near the Mediterranean coast opposite Cyprus. Next is the Zamorite, meaning a man of Simra near Antardus on the west spur of Mount Lebanon. And the uh, Hamatites are the Kamatai, <laughs> a man of a city known as El Hama and situated on the Orantes north of Phoenicia and the uh, middle la latitude of Cyprus, a very ancient name known among the Kuinetic inscription of Assyria and hieroglyphed among the conquest of Ramses III. The Hamathites spread themselves from Mount Lebanon over all the Holy Land, far as Arabia. They extended from the region eastward to the Tigris and inhabited the eastern border of Arabia as far as the Indian Ocean. And that on the west, they possessed the valley of the Nile as far as the cataract <laughs> and spread They possessed the valley of the Nile as far as the first cataract. The spread not only therefore was the was the primitive civilization of Egypt, Hamitic, but also that of Barbary, as well as that of Phoenicia, Judea, Syria, Chaldea, Assyria, Babylonia, Susiana, and Hemiaritic, or eastern and parts of southern Arabia. These are the sins of No. No or uh, Nuak or uh, Utan Fishta and her son Kayam and their families and their tongues and their countries or lands and, and their nations. The Semites entered the dispersion. <coughs> Pursuing the same course as the Hamites, we shall first follow the primitive distribution of the Semites. So you see, we deal with the primitive distributions, is worldwide now, Moors. <laughs> As given in our genealogical table, Shem, or Shem, it signifies a name. It is a radical letter, which are the essential, essential and original constituents, constituents of the written word. <coughs> it is simply S M, just like a lot of words, sustaining a relation to the Moorish Latin signum. Or sign or signify. From Shem we have Elam, Ailam or Elam, generally God as denoting the Elamites or inhabitants of Elamites, sometimes Susiana or Kisia, on the eastern side of the Persian Gulf. <coughs> In classical history, Elamites are generally associated with the Yapetic Persians and were the founders of the Persians. The Elah was settled permanently by Semites, whom a Japheg tribe displaced at a later period, as the Semites themselves displaced and absorbed so many Hamitic nations. Next we have Ashur, or Ashur, and an eponym of Assyria is an eponym of Assyria or Assyrians. Nimrod the Hamite went out of Babel to Ashur and both Ninewa Ninewe and other cities. Later, however, the Hamite element in those Syrian cities were absorbed by preponderating Semites 
and they began many strict scenes the abode of Ashur, who were venerated in later times as the guardian deity of the Assyrians. <coughs> Next come Arphraxide, Arphraxide, as the Septuagint translates, the name stands for the North Assyrians. It signifies etymologically the border of the Chaldeans from which the Hebrew language derived. A thousand years later, Ur was within the bounds of Aphroxide. On to the Shala, or Shalak, denotes the Shalakians, inhabitants of the Shalakia in Ptolemy in ancient Susiana at the head of the Persian Gulf. Next is Aber or Eber or Heber, the son or colony of Shila, Salah, denotes etymologically those on the other side or those from the other side, alluding to the arrival of the Abrahamidae from the east of the Ephrates. The early beginning of the Shaldean origin of this tribal table signifying those going to the west side of the Ephrates. In either case, a designation applied after the event when the Eber had settled in Canaan and acquired the name of Hebrews. Since by common consent, the primitive Eber was located on the east of the Ephrates in Chaldea. Next, we have the famous Yaktan, or Yaktan, one of the sons of Heber, or one of the affiliation colonized from the Heberites, designated the Yaktan. Tiny days or primitive stock of northern and western Moorish, known as Arabs. And um, we can see from the history that we're going through that um, you had the Tyrants, the Tyranians of Tyre, and um, Sedan, Sedonians, who with the Israelites who uh, um, with Solomon set up the kingdom of Judea on the west coast of Africa and set up the kingdom of Tarsus on the coast of America was so up, down, up and down the continent both sides of it the Atlantic these, these same tribes we talking about so we can follow this story up to now <laughs> practically <coughs> they then they had uh, there is the Alamodad or the Alamodad, the first issue from Jakta represents by general consent the Alamo do e -E of Ptolemy, a people of Central Arabia Felix. Hold on. <laughs> Next is Shalep, second issue from Jakta. And uh, also, I believe Yucatan come from Yucatan. Are the Salapini of Ptolemy now identified with Metere in the neighborhood of Mecca? The Katsar Ramat, <laughs> the Hazar Mawat, Mawif, third issue of Yucatan, are the Kath Ramitai of Ptolemy, now at Hadramat, a modern province in the south of Arabia Felix, between Yemen and the Mahara country. The people were known to the ancients as Atramitai, Jera, or Yarak, fourth issue from Jokden. Is easily identifiable with the modern tribe designated as Yareb or Arab, son of Yakta, on the Arabian Gulf border on the Arabic yeah, Felix, or ancient, attributed to them as a wide territory stretching from Persian Gulf to the streets of Babel Mandeb. Haram, fifth issue from Jokta are located from the mouth of the Persian Gulf to the southern shore of Arabia Felix west of Jira. Uzzah or Utsa. 
six issue from Yachtin, corresponding to modern Sena, the capital of the province of Yemen. Yemen. Once a flourishing town and a river with rival of Damascus. Dikla. Seven issue from Jokdan. Was represented by the Duke Hilitai of Himya and a tribe known as Du La Kala in Yemen. Obal. Eighth issue from Yorkton. The noted tribe colonized in West during Arabia, north of Mecca. The tribe spread from Arabia to the African shores through the Straits of Babel Mandeb. Abi Ma'el. And I, and I did show a map showing you the same tribes in America, the different dispersions on this side from the same tribe. I'll be in my area. Remember that? Reading that. Knife issue from Jopton. Answer to the Mali of Diopatus and the Mali Kai of Ptolemy and the name of the perpetrated in the town of Malai near Medina. So you already know the Mali Hapar H right? I be my L Sheba. You already know about Sheba. Tenth issue from Jockton referred to the reminiscence of Sheba. Still preserving local names of the southwest of Arabia. This name is but slightly designated from the Hermetic Shaba. Ophir. A level is from Yachtin, it's based in the southwest corner of Arabia. Havila, 12th issue from Yachtin, is believed to be represented by the Yobritai of Ptolemy and the modern Beni Jobi Boob in ancient Katabania, midway between Sanaa and Zebi in Arabia. And um, Dr. Clyde Winters. He connected a lot of these new language to America and other parts of the world. <coughs> a lot of these tribes, ancient tribes, first families. Peleg, the other son of a colony of Heber located in Upper Mesopotamia. Lud, name of the fourth son of Shem, is the eponym of the Ladians, located in the western part of Asia Minor on the Aegean Sea. At the most remote period, however, this region had become inhabited by the dynasty of Pelagians. The Lud was primarily located north of the Palestine and the close neighborhood of the Syrians. Aram, called the first son of Shem and his wife Fatin. Genesis 10, 22, Aramic, Hebrew, with the language of the Aramines, the descendant of the Aram. Aram settled in a country which was later called Aram, Numbers 32, 37. And the language Aramic was named after them. Aramic, Aram, Aram, is generally understood to designate tribes stretching from northern Arabia to Syria and central Mesopotamia to Armenia. A name which still perpetrates the patronymic thanks to, to the border of Lydia. Armenia was the name of Phrygia and Central Asia Minor in the time of Homer. During this time, the Moors of Syria called themselves Aramaeans. These Moors extend as far southwest as Damascus. The Aram of Damascus came to, and I've been showing you stories of um, Damascus stuff in that play, even when we've been talking about America, Moorish American is to really, in like the 15 to 1400s type shit. So he came to Sukkor, Hador, Desir, and Davisu of Aram, 2 and 22,000. All of these are descendants of No, No, Nuak, Utan Fishtam, and her son Shem. 
after their families, after their tongues, in their countries and land or lands and in their nations. These are the parents of many Semitic dialects, namely Ugaric, Chaldean, Syriac, Akkadian, and that's how we that's why we know, because we follow through languages and through all kinds of other ways, but language is one of the best. You can follow families. It's a Akkadian, the Phoenician, the Moabite, the Uranic, and uh, the Hebrew and the Uranic is what we call Moorish land today, Uranic. <laughs> Hebrew, Aramic, Ashuric, Arabic, Sumerian, the Ge'ez, Amharic, and even Farsi Persian, coming from the language of the Elohim, Genesis 1 1. The Canaanite, more by Phoenician Hebrew, hieroglyph character. And linguistic link is seen in the ancient Semitic inscription of the Moabite stone. The ancient Hebrew inscription of Siloam and the Phoenician Biblis of the Persian Age. Biblus. The Phoenician Sidon sarcophagus of Tabneath and the Phoenician Sidonian king King Eshmoon Azar inscription and we look up a good bit of these already a bunch of these videos the Phoenician Sidonian king Eshmoon Azar inscriptions through the days of Carthaginian general Hasdrubal Bay Carthage and more Sicily Keraka uh, 4th century BC in Gaul Masasili Masasili modern day Marseilles is the Punic stone of the Carthaginian constitution of Marseilles also being an ancient form of Moorish Latin these Moorish Canaanite Phoenician Punic and Moabite inscription are among the ancient Moorish epigraphical documents of America before the time of Jesus Christ Catholicism's Julius Kaiser, <laughs> Jesus Christ, that version again. Further evidence in the said Federal United States Archive, Bureau of Administration, Department of State, Ralph J. Bunch Library, if they don't burn it down, oh, y'all listen to this 100 years from now. <laughs> Car number BP232U73. This information, however, is accessible only to all Moorish American National State Department personnel and the international community at large by through the Talismanic Holy Kingdom of Pat Mario Fonus, Foreign Ministry, National Legation, and Belik, the Moorish American Society of Comprehensive Science. State Department personnel may, of course, also obtain this information from the Bob Bureau of Administration. A document from the one Moorish American two Federal United States three International World Record is defined as an instrument on which recorded by means of letter figures or marks alphabet characters of any language the original official or legal form of something as in this judicial monograph you are currently reading or listening to or watching which may be evidently used. In this sense, the term document applies to writings, to words, printed, lithograph, or photograph on flags or flags themselves, to maps or plans, to seals, plates, or even stones on which inscriptions are cut or engraved. So that's these are the things that you gotta have yourself. Stop looking at wrong stuff and let wrong do these things for you because they playing games with you. This is why the term or the word document as opposed to artifact should be used when in legal arenas, when questions and concerns or challenges are presented or raised in a matter of interesting corporeal documentary evidence. This Spanish string, the Moorish American by right to that land referred to as America. The term document despite its one dimensional association in the common usage of today's world as you can see from the above legal definition is not limited to writing on paper. However, because of the current narrow minor perception, it is the best 
to use the term document when attempting to present your evidence. Alut laudibus efere. The magnificent Prince Kabir Uriel B. And we done. Like any recording, even if you're making a video, it's a record, a legal document, a true document, first hand knowledge, first hand testimony, an affidavit. <laughs> I ain't going on, but we'll see you in the next one. Peace.